Do you have gas? Well, I have a tip that might give you some relief. No, I'm not talking about that kind of gas. I'm talking about gadget acquisition syndrome. It's something I think all of us woodworkers have. Hi there, I'm Don Bullock and welcome to WB Fine Woodworking. Well, I have to admit that I've had gas. I had a bad case of it when I started thinking of this tool wall and these tool racks in the windows. I was also thinking of a tool cabinet over here on this side over in the little space of wall I have over there. And when I started thinking about putting all these tools up, I had a bad case of gas. I have to admit that when I saw the photos and the video that Christopher Schwartz did on H.O. Studley's tool cabinet, I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic to have something like that? Then I saw this tool cabinet. Unfortunately, the maker of this one is unknown. And this highly organized tool cabinet made by Mike Pekovich would be a really nice thing to have. Speaking of modern, highly organized tool cabinets, if you haven't seen the video on this one that's Dan Smith's tool chest, I highly recommend it. And this freestanding tool cabinet by Andy Ray is just outstanding. Then we have the tool walls like this one in the Hay Cabinet Shop at Colonial Williamsburg. And I've seen countless photos of tool walls just like this one. And wouldn't this be a wonderful tool collection to have? I thought after seeing all these fancy tool walls and tool cabinets, it might be best to get all the tools first before I made one. That way it would be organized. One of the places we get inundated with a lot of woodworking gadgets is social media. Facebook and Instagram, particularly for me, I see posts from manufacturers and from tool retailers that are trying to sell their latest tool or their, show their latest idea in tools. Individuals ask questions about the tools. You know, how about that latest one-time only tool? How is that? Or I'm planning to buy a whatever it is and is this a good one that I need to buy? I don't know how many different uh, dovetail saws that you can uh, buy through uh, Instagram. I know of at least three or four. Instagram is full of gadget posts. This one recommends clamps that he got free from a company. This tool company wants you to see a shop that's fully outfitted with their tools. This person wants you to buy their custom push sticks. Here's someone that thinks everyone should have a demagnetizer. And this company wants everyone to know about their upcoming tool. How about buying this special woodworking saw? Here's a post about a whole set of saws the maker sold to someone. Facebook has its share of woodworking gadget posts as well. This guy will sell you woodworking mallets made from exotic woods. Here's someone that wants everyone to know what kind of gadgets they just bought. Here's someone that wants to know everybody's opinion on this grizzly combo machine. This poster is a newbie in woodworking and wants to know if this is a good deal. This woodworker wants to know if these saws ever go on sale. Facebook also seems to be full of ads from tool companies and retail outlets. And then there's Facebook Marketplace. Um, oh, I got this twin screw vise off of there. If you're like me, you get inundated from tool companies and retailers for all kinds of tools. I get emails every day trying to get me to buy this thing or that thing. Here are some that I woke up to this morning in my email inbox. Oh, and somehow I ended up on their email list twice. YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sure that you've seen all the videos from the manufacturers on different tools that they've introduced. And you also have individuals, I can't think of anyone in particular, but they always tell you about the handy tool that they have in their shop. This is just a small representation of the many videos you can find on YouTube. It's sometimes amazing all the gadgets you can see there. 
Some companies rely heavily on video for their marketing. Then there are companies like Woodcraft that put out their must-have gadget list every year at Christmas time. Now here's a guy that will tell you all about all kinds of gadget and tools. Some that he buys and some, like the workbench he's behind, are given to him by companies. But he does his best to tell which is which. Then there are some guys, uh, this one looks sort of familiar, who will tell you about all kinds of gadgets and tools and have no connection to any kind of companies. And then there seems to be one company out there that has to offer one-time only tools. If you don't buy it now, you're never going to buy it again because we're only offering it one time. Um, I think I have a few of those tools myself. And then we have the sales. Boy, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at my computer in the morning and had these emails about these fantastic sales. You know, 35% off. One company is always 10% off. And here in California, that barely pays for the sales tax. I don't know about you, but I don't have to look far for examples of gas in my shop. Six inch rules alone is a great example. I have several, as you can see. The first one is by a company named iGaging. I think it's supposed to be iGaging. It looks more like iGagging, but I'm sure that's not how they want it pronounced. It's an excellent, well-made steel rule. I use it quite a bit on the front side. On the back side, I don't use it all that much. It gets down to 64th of an inch. I have trouble seeing 64th of an inch, much less marking that on a piece of wood, but it's still a handy rule. The second one I have here is one that has the metric system. Now, I know many of you live in countries that use the metric system and you love it. It's wonderful. Unfortunately, due to politics, and I'm not going to get into the politics of that, we don't use the metric system in the United States. We use the old system called imperial for some reason. So this side is not very useful to me. And then the other side of these rules are real strange. Down here, they use different increments between the inches than they use here. And then they use different one down here at the other end of the ruler. It's extremely difficult to read these rulers and I don't use them that much and I have a whole set of them. The next one is by a company named Vinca. And over here on this side, it has from zero down to six inches. And on the other side, it goes from six inches down to zero. And the little hook is great. It hooks on a piece of wood like that. And you can easily measure the piece of wood by hooking the edge over the piece of wood. That's a handy one for woodworkers and I have used it quite a bit. The next one is very strange in that it increases or decreases numbers based on pi. We know in nature that pi is pleasant to the eye and that's what these rulers do. They help create woodworking that's pleasant to the eye. I have used these rulers. I do. I have a whole set of them. I've used them to create a trophy that I made for the Basset Hound Club. Each layer of the trophy was decreased by pi using these rulers. They're an excellent ruler. And uh, I, like I said, I have a whole set of them. Then, of course, the red one has to get in there. This particular one is the Poloni Pocket Rule. This is one of those one-time only tools, you gotta buy it now, that keeps coming back. In fact, just recently, they've announced that this one-time tool is now a permanent part of their tool offerings. So you can now buy one of these as well. It's a nice rule, I've used it quite a bit. One of the things I've noticed with this rule is that these knobs have to be tightened down pretty tight, otherwise the slide will move on you. But it is an excellent rule and I have used that quite a bit. And then there's my favorite, the Woodsmith Fine Tools Rule. 
This is an excellent ruler. I've used it many times. In fact, I did a video on these rulers and you might want to check that out because I find that these rulers are very helpful and very useful in the wood shop. So that's examples of gas in my shop. It, down in the description below, give me some ideas. What kind of gas do you have in your shop? The tips I have for you that will help cure you of this disorder are pretty simple. The first one is to buy tools when you need them. I was working on a project the other day. I needed a particular tool. I looked on Amazon and I found exactly what I wanted at a reasonable price. I ordered it and it's supposed to come today. Yes, I had maybe a day's delay, but I've been working on other things out in the shop. So it didn't really make that much difference. And I'm going to get the tool that I really need to have. One that I really do a lot is to look for items on sale that I know that I'm going to be using either on a project that I have right now or one that I have on my list of plans. I have some projects planned out and sometimes a tool will come up on sale and I'll look at it and say, that's fantastic. In fact, Rockler the other day had a sale, some things were on 50% off. I couldn't lose on that. Uh, so I went ahead and bought the things because I know that I'm going to be using them in a planned project. And probably the most important of these tips is look beyond the hype. So often I see these tools that does this and it does that and it does something else. And I look at it and think, I don't do all those things. I really don't need a tool that does this or that. It might be have a tool that will do this one thing that this tool will do but I don't need one that will do all of those things. So look beyond the hype for some of these tools. Some of these tools are hyped up like they will do everything you ever wanted them to do and do them much better than much more accurately than everything else. Um, of course, as woodworkers, do we really need that much accuracy? So to sum it up, buy tools when you need them. Look for things on sale that you know that you need now or are going to need sometime in the near future. And look beyond the hype of a lot of these ads. They try to get you to buy things that you really don't need. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Thank you all for your questions and comments. I greatly appreciate it. Those of you that have subscribed to our channel, you're wonderful. Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed already, you might want to do that. Thank you all very much for watching.